Good evening, my name's Alex Campbell, and you're watching the sixth episode of Dissecting Thrones. If last week's episode was the worst episode of Game of Thrones ever, this week's episode confirms that like Chester Bennington, Game of Thrones is hanging dead from its neck in a closet somewhere. So this episode opens with our A-team walking from East to Watch to catch a White Walker and it really shows examples of some really forced exposition style dialogue. It's like the dialogue was there specifically in place to remind the audience of events that have happened and character traits. Look, man, a moment. I thought you'd never come back to Westeros. But you are back. And it's been in your family for centuries. I'm John Snare and I'm Nerbal. I wanted to join the Brotherhood, but you sold me off. Oh, do you remember when you guys captured me? Did you trip into the fire when you were a baby? I didn't trip, I was pushed. Ever since you've been mean. I'm the hound and I'm angry, you remember? So these characters stop to talk and I can't help but wonder what the rest of the party is doing. Whether they looked back at them and saw that they weren't walking and just decided to continue on in their journey or whether they're all stopped and they're just standing around waiting for them to stop their dialogue so they can continue on their mission. Your father gave me this sword. Changed the pommel from a bear to a wolf. But it's still long claw. Look, man, a moment. Thought you'd never come back to Westeros. But you are back. And it's been in your family for centuries. It's not right for me to have it. He gave it to you. I'm not his son. It's... I brought shame into my house. I broke my father's heart. I forfeited the right to claim this soul. It's yours. It served you well. And your children after you. D&D &D are trying to set up this whole Arya, Sansa, drama thing and the whole thing is completely pointless and forced. It's completely indifferent from Arya's character. I mean, I can't for one second honestly imagine Arya would think that Sansa is to blame for Ned's death. That makes no sense. And Arya's not stupid. She's been set up as a smart, intelligible character. And now she's just stupid all of a sudden. Now he's dead. Killed by the Lannisters. With your help. What? Well, I do respect the fact that they actually went to Iceland and actually really filmed this in snow. And some of the landscape shots are really beautiful. I feel like the visuals of a movie are only there to serve the story. And if the story is complete garbage, then... What do the visuals accomplish? Nothing. Gingers I hate. Gingers are beautiful. We are kissed by fire. Yeah, you see? Gingers are fucking beautiful. So if you kill one of these commanders, whoever they've personally converted dies. I've never said that up before. And when John killed another commander at Hardhome, they didn't show any other Wild Walkers dying. The way this is set up and how all of the White Walkers die, bar this one, enabling our characters to seize it, exactly what they came here for, just sticks out to me as an example of lazy writing. I 
I mean, I feel like D&D are bored of this series at this point and they're fed up with the immense toll that it would take on them, which it would. The workload to produce and write and co-create this show would be massive. And of course, seven, eight, nine, ten years of it is a massive sacrifice to your personal life. But if you're burnt out and you don't feel like doing this project anymore, then give it to someone else. Give it to someone who is keen and eager to complete this series. Run back to Eastwood. Get a raven to Daenerys. Tell her what's happened. I'm not leaving you. You're the fastest. Go! Now! Gendry's the fastest? I don't remember them setting that up. They might have. Then again, they might not have. And it might just be like, hey, Gendry, you're the fastest. Gendry, you're the fastest. Run back to Eastwatch. We'll go in this opposite direction. So then, the White Walkers approach our heroes, and a circle in the ice breaks perfectly around our heroes, isolating them from the White Walkers who are seemingly surrounding them by their own at that point. Great. <laughs> Now when Gendry starts running, it's daytime, and by the time he gets to Eastwatch, it's night time. So at the maximum, he's running for 12 hours. So really, in the grand scheme of stuff, they've only just left Eastwatch. If they'd only just left Eastwatch and only been travelling for 12 to 24 hours, they'd still be able to see the wall from their location. Now this is a really novice observation, but obviously the White Walkers could just step over that metre of ice. Or, you know, the Night King could get a run up on his horse and jump it. What the fuck ever, man. When you killed the White Walker, almost all the dead that followed it fell. Why? Plot convenience! So the fast travel up until this point could have been explained by saying that they're still travelling the same distances and still takes the same time, we're just not shown that travel time. But Gendry runs back from where they were beyond the wall to Eastwatch and they send ravens down to Dragonstone and then Daenerys mounts her dragons and rides up to where they are, seemingly in like approximately 12 hours max because it doesn't change from night time to day again. Now Westeros is a big place, it's not the length of England, it's more closely compared to the length of South America. It's obvious that the geography and how long it takes to travel is completely flown out the window and they don't give a fuck. Imagine flying a raven from the top of South America to the bottom of South America in half an hour and getting in a biplane and flying that distance. I mean, I know she's travelling on a dragon, not a horse, but, but still, like, this is ridiculous. When we get back, our characters aren't tired or look like they spend the night on the ice. It looks like they've been sitting there for about six hours. So, based on how the White Walkers attack our group of heroes after they realise that the water is actually frozen over, I would assume that the Night King has told them to only attack 12 at a time rather than just mass them and murder them because the Night King wants them alive. Obviously I'm grasping at straws here and trying to find logic and lazy writing but like what the fuck is the Night King doing? He's just standing there. If he wanted the White Walkers to kill these people he could have just commanded them to rush them all at once. But rather all of the White Walkers approach our heroes about 12 at a time so these six invincible people can seemingly destroy the villains with ease. Now John was just a Dragonstone, and the reason he went to Dragonstone was to get Dragon Glass. Now he went to Dragonstone, he found there was Dragon Glass there, and I presume that they started mining it. And then at that point he said, hey, I'm gonna travel beyond the wall to catch a White Walker. So I would have assumed that this team set up specifically to hunt and catch a White Walker 
and confront Wyatt Walkers in open battle would be armed heavily to the teeth with a whole bunch of Dragonglass. But Dragonglass barely shows up in this episode, if at all. There are a few shots where they pull knives where I'm like, is that Dragonglass? <laughs> is that Dragonglass? But it didn't show the White Walkers exploding or anything. What I'm saying here is that it's a pretty big slip for John as a military commander to not um take the dragon glass with him beyond the wall to fight the White Walkers. I mean, did he? Were they halfway there on the boat? And it's like, fuck! The dragon glass! I should have gotten the dragon glass to kill these White Walkers. Fall back! Fall back! To where? You're surrounded! I also thought to show that the stakes were a lot higher than they were, I should have killed off a couple, if not three, of these main characters. But instead of that, all we get is two red shirts who die. Now one of the reasons that people enjoyed Martin's book so much, and the first five seasons of Game of Thrones, was that the storyline subverted expectations. Martin killing Ned, the main character, at the end of the first book really challenged the audience and let them know that this wasn't going to be some predictable Hollywood storyline. It was going to surprise and challenge us. But this episode was completely predictable for me. I mean, this cliched hand out of the water shot by John. It just, it really seems like a dumbing down of quality to me. Get on the dragon! Yes! Get on the dragon! What are you doing? Get on the dragon! Get on the- No! Ah, oh, you just- you- what do you- what? Fuck. Traditionally in Game of Thrones, the ninth episode of the season has been the big confrontation and action oriented scenarios. Now being that this season is only seven episodes, this sixth episode served as that. Now I haven't actually done this, but I think it'd be an interesting experiment to sit down and watch the ninth episodes of all the seasons, and then this, which is the equivalent for this season. I feel like tonally, this episode would be in a completely different place from what we've seen previous with the execution of Ned, the Battle of the Blackwater, the Red Wedding, and other action climaxes. I feel like what was once a semi-serious medieval drama has now become something more tonally equivalent to a Michael Bay story. And it's really disappointing because I really did not get into the show to see a dragon get turned by the Night King. I was into this show because of the realistic characters and the great dialogue. And that all seems to be brushed to the side now for the lowest common denominator. It really disappoints me. I mean, I'm not even angry at this point. I'm just disappointed. This was a great show and I love this show and now it's Hollywood schlock. Benjen disappearing was integral for John's storyline and it motivated him to go beyond the wall to begin with. It just really pisses me off that they throw Benjen in at the last moment to save John after they've already thrown Daenerys in at the last moment to save John. There's barely a reaction from John. It's not even seen. If they wanted to introduce Benjen into this episode, they should have done it earlier on and, you know, had some fulfilling moments with John and Benjen. But this wasn't about that. It was just a last ditched effort for, hey, we're saving John again. Uncle Benjen. So John's gonna die of hypothermia, right? He just crawled out of freezing water and been straddled to a horse, completely soaked to the bone, and now he's gonna arrive for approximately 
6 to 12 hours in below freezing conditions. He's dead! Just have a hard cut of them teleporting to King's Landing with the White Walker at this point. Fuck it, why not? I like how the mysticism of the faceless man is just boiled down to a literal bag of faces for Arya. That's great. That's good job, chaps. Good job. I mean, they literally just look like latex masks. Where did you get them? From a joke shop. Those faces. What are they? Nixon, Batman, Gene Simmons. So why walkers can't swim? They established that at hard home because John was leaving on the boat and they didn't swim to try and catch him. Then they established it with the plot convenient ring of water around the ice island which our heroes are on. So, you know, it really makes me wonder how the White Walkers attach these massive chains to the dragon if they can't swim. I mean, how do they do that? Night King magic? Is that what we're putting it down to? Night King magic! Yay! One more episode, one more episode and then we're done. Let's just fucking get this off, just like a band-aid. All we need to do is rip it the fuck off and move on with our lives.